Okay, so um, I'm, I'm pretty much going to go through the scenarios in order. Um, and like Ray mentioned, I don't, you know, I don't want to get too uh, uh, in-depth because um, we've got some time constraints. So um, the first one, we're doing an inspection on an iPad. And I've got my iPad here, so we're just going to use that. Um, now this is, uh, you know, we actually, you know, we, a lot of times we don't really go in and, and set up uh, specific stuff because it takes a lot of time. So we, you know, usually go and look at um, customers and see if we can find something similar. So that's kind of what I'll be doing today um, for the most part. This is uh, Urbana, Illinois, and they do rental registrations and, um, and inspections. So it's probably a really, it's actually a pretty good example for number one. The, um, I've got an inspection queued up here. You can see um, under my calendar. And, um, you know, basically uh, how I would go about doing my inspection is I'm going to click on the file. Um, click on that again. And um, that's going to pull the actual um, file up for me. And that's, you know, kind of where I would start. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to go over to add violations because I'm going to be at the property and I'm walking around. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, add a violation here. And I'm just going to click on the violation um, button there off on, the, off on the right. Now, so what I've got here is, you know, we're doing a, an apartment building. Um, and I set one of those up for us. And, you know, basically we can walk around. We can have different sections of codes. So if I click on that, you can kind of see I've got different sections here. Um, when you select those, you know, it's going to um, limit the list that we get off of our description. So if I click on that, I can get um, a list of, that's that's actually the codes. I'm, I want to click on the description here. And um, this is pulling up the description. And you can see it's kind of, they're really the finger-friendly version of, of that drop-down list box control. And I'll just pick a couple of um, items here. This is going to be I'm doing all addresses, you can see at the top, so this would be like a common area issue. And in their particular case, they've got um, uh, basically, and I've been having some issues with my iPad recently. Um, they've got a, um, you know, kind of a, a different categories that they put in their letters, you know, so here I'm picking kind of imminent health or livability or regular maintenance. Um, I'll click on uh, this one here, and then I can also do a follow-up date. Um, I'll say the 17th. And we can use the microphone for or the keypad for putting comments in. So if you want to put comments in, you can. This is an example of using speech-to-text on the iPad. So basically, you can use that if you want um, when you're walking around. So I'm going to add another um, comment area violation here. So I'm going to click on, um, it's going to ask me here if I want to schedule a follow-up. And I do. So, you know, we can schedule follow-ups either uh, when you put in a follow-up date or we can actually um, do it when we issue the notice. So we, we, we can do processing to schedule inspection follow-ups when we generate notices. Um, <clears throat> so let me pick another kind of common area thing. Um, and we'll go ahead and put in a uh, livability. Um, and uh, maybe in this one here, you know, I can, uh, um, I can take a picture. And I'll kind of show you what that looks like. I'm going to click on Add Documents. And so um, these are going to be associated with the violation. And so when I do these on an iPad, um, it kind of gives me an option to pick from the photo library, um, take a photo or video or go to the iCloud Drive. So I'm going to click on my camera here. So basically, um, when you take the picture, you can just click on Use Photo. And um, that's going to actually put the photo in there for you. So you don't have to, you know, it used to be that you would kind of have to fumble around with things. And I can put a description in here, um, maybe indicating where the photo was or something like that. Like maybe it's the second story bathroom or something like that. Um, I'll click on save. And so you can see that this photo has been saved with, with the violation um, that I entered. So that's kind of doing um, some common area 
violations. And the violations show up under here, uh, under the violations tab. Now let me do a unit. So let's say I walk into one of the units there, and I'll click on the same violation thing. And now I've got all addresses up here. And basically, this allows me to pick which unit this is for. So um, you know, I've got 100, 101, 102, and stuff like that. So I can jump in here and, um, and select one or more addresses, I believe. And I'll go ahead and pick another um, code in here, and um, which may or may not make sense. And I'm going to pick. Uh, um, I follow up date here, and I'll say that's on the 17th. If I have two uh, follow up dates that are the same, then um, basically, you know, it's not. It shouldn't ask me again. Um, if I have a different follow up date, it's going to ask me if, to schedule that. So if I want to have that put on my calendar, I can do that. Uh, so let's do. Um, we'll do save and add another here. And um, again, I can pick the uh, particular um, unit number. Let me go up here and pick a unit number here. And um, pick another option here. And we'll go over here and pick. Go ahead and pick the date here. And we'll throw in a, a date. And. Uh, we're going to pick the 28th maybe on this one. So, and I'll pick another disposition, regular maintenance, and we'll save that. So that's going to basically um, uh, save those violations with my license. It's here, my uh, uh, rental registration. So if I go back over here to my violations tab, um, you know, that's going to show up. So basically after I add my violations and I take my pictures and those types of things, um, I can generate the uh, notice of violation or you know whatever the first follow-up letter is. This is, um, they use, uh, uh, they call it the systematic inspection. Um, let me jump back to my file here. And, and I want to show you, we can combine the information from an activity form into um, actually and the violations into the actual form. So if I go over here and um, I can see my inspections, and I got my reinspections been scheduled um, based on the follow-up date that I had selected. And if I go in here and I click on um, uh, my inspection, this is the actual inspection form. Um, you know, so. We, we can do signatures like in the field if we want. We can put notes in here. Um, you can put your hours in and stuff like that. But um, you know, I can go in and pick a completion date. And um, we'll say that this failed. Um, you know, If I want, I can throw some notes in here. This address has many issues and problems that need to be fixed. And so you can you can use that if you want. Um, and then we also do signatures in the field. Sometimes there's like a a person in charge or something like that, and you want to incorporate their signature into the um, into the report. And we can do that. I'll just do a little signature here, and we'll save that. Now I'm going to go over here to um, my letters, and this is kind of where you know we're going to generate you know our citation, notice of violation, um, that type of thing. Uh, so I'm going to send this, basically I'm going to send this out to, well, I'll do it to my applicant. Um, and they have several different notices, right? So um, these are the notices that are kind of applicable to this particular department um, for um, this particular activity, right? Um, so I'm going to pick out, this is going to be the systematic first violation notice because they have multiple notices. And this is, has to be associated with a um, with an activity. So I'm going to um, pick one of these activities here, and I can I can actually, if I want, I can include photos um, in the letter. So that's just a general option, kind of throughout Citizen Serve. When you set up a letter, you can do that, um, and and I'll just click on Generate Letter. So this is a this is a semi-complex 
form. And um, you know, basically, this in this one here, we break down the um, uh, imminent health, livability issues. Um, you know, we put our reinspection date in here um, based on the dates that we picked, and um, we've got some other information about the violation categories. You know, kind of how the fines and stuff like that add up, and you know, we've got kind of our picture down here that we took um, also included. So so that's sort of a, a violation form. A lot of our customers do this out in the field. So you can actually, um, you can edit this if you want out in the field. You know, we're device and browser independent. So um, I can click the edit button on an iPad and I can edit this letter if I wanted to. Um, I'm going to click on print because you wanted to kind of see something printed in the field. And basically it's going to find whatever Bluetooth printer or whatever printer you have set up, you know, on your iPad or Android or Surface device, and, and you can print to that and hand the, the person um, in charge there the letter. So, uh, so that's kind of the field inspection. I'm going to save this. All these things get saved to the, uh, uh, to the documents tab. So here I've got my photograph and um, I've got my um, my notice that I printed out. So, so if I go back out there on my reinspection and I and I notice that some of the violations have been fixed, right? Maybe this laundry area receptacle um, issue has been fixed. I can go in and um, basically close this out. And um, I can change it, you know, the close date. I can change the status to closed. Um, they're using disposition, you know, as kind of their categories. You know, I could put in some additional notes if I wanted to, um, that sort of thing, and save this. So this is going to take that off the list um, of things that are going to show up on my, you know, my second notice. And then I kind of go in here, basically, if I wanted to, um, and add another violation, you know. So if I wanted to add, if I was out there and, um, you know, I, I noticed another problem, I could pick another unit number, um, basically go in and pick another issue, like outlet extensions. And these are all, you know, categories and stuff like that that um, you can have. They're department-based and easy to change, easy to modify, stuff like that. So. And I'll say that this is just livability, and I'll put in a follow-up date. And I can put some comments in there. I can take a picture, just like we were doing before. So, and I'll go ahead and save that. And it's asking me if I want to schedule a follow-up, and I'll say yes to that. So, um, so basically, I'm out there, you know, and I'm going to do give them another notice because they haven't fixed it. Um, so I'm going to go to letter here. And basically, to my applicant, which is the person who kind of owns the rental registration, um, I can put in um, second notice. I'm going to associate this with my um, reinspection activity. I can put my photo in there if I want to, but I'm not going to. And then I can generate a letter. And this is you know, this is my second notice. And you know we've taken the closed issues off and put the new issue on. You know, so that's kind of uh, um, what we've done with this. And so that's uh, that's doing the inspection, printing the form out, um, printing. Um, we kind of covered showing a follow-up and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and move on to, and I wanted to show you another thing because the, uh, the variability in, in jurisdictions is, is quite dramatic, and there's usually about six different ways to do things in citizen serve. So, I logged in as another customer of ours, um, Miriam, Kansas, and you can kind of see that they do rental inspections. Um, you know, here I, I've got some overdues. This is a metric in citizen serves, kind of like a report. Um, I can look at my overdue inspections if I want, and basically, if I jump in here and uh, um, take a look at one of these. I just want to show you what the inspection looks like. They use more of a form, and that's also fairly common. Um, 
here's a rental inspection that passed. And um, you can see that this is a, uh, you know, it's got the different areas of the property and very specific, you know, exterior walls, exterior trim, guttering, roof, chimney. Um, you know, so they use a very, you know, here's the family room, you know, a very specific checklist. It looks like in this particular case they just passed it. Um, your question? Okay. So we can um, we can basically do, you know, big activity forms that get filled out when you do an inspection and an inspection report. And we can combine the information on the activity form with the violations that are open or noted and, and put those into a, a pretty detailed inspection form. So let's move on to um, number two is Basically, the property management, and we have contacts um, in CitizenServe, and I'm going to log in here as the guy we were logged in as. And their their um, form is very similar to kind of what you're wanting. Uh, basically, if I go in and look at my uh, rental registration, we've got um, and this is, you know, a, a typical license in CitizenServe. Um, and what we've got here is, you know, this is the, these are all the custom fields. And we can do um, any number of custom fields. And we have about 30 custom field types. One of them is a contact listing. And so that's what these are. You know, so if I want to see, and I put myself in here for owner, agent, you know, and then we, we've got the fees I think are based on number of buildings and number of units. And then um, we've got the mailing address here. So we can, we can either do a check boxes or a drop down list box that kind of uh, identifies who the mail, what the mailing addresses are for all notices related to the property. Um, if I click on dot, dot, dot here, this is going to pull up um, my user. And I can see all that information, modify it, change it, and that sort of thing. So, um, so that's kind of a little bit on how we manage multiple addresses. We have a contact, custom contact field type, and um, you know that's kind of what we do there. Uh, on the property information, um, I'm going to click on this binoculars here, which will take me to, in the upper right-hand corner, that's going to take me to the property information. And I can click on view additional property information. And um, we have standard property fields, which probably go down to uh, latitude and longitude. And then we can do custom property fields um, in the system also. So, you know, so here I've got, in this case, Urbana, Illinois, they've, they've got a, quite a bit of information that they track in addition to parcel number, owner address, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, so that sort of, uh, we can import that from the county or from the GIS group or integrate directly with Esri. Um, and pull the information real time with web services. So um, we also there's a um, so if I wanted to uh, flag okay so we've got the mailing address we covered that ability to flag a property with important information. So basically when I'm um, uh, looking at a property like I am now I can go over here and do I can add a note I can add a document you know maybe there's a layout of the of the parcel or something, I can add that to the property file. Um, I can also add alerts, and you know this is uh, basically a property alert. This is uh, important information about the property, and I can um, add that, and that's going to show the alert icon now on this property. And if I go back over to my home page, um, you'll kind of see. And actually, I'm not sure if I was in the. Let me see if I can. Um, Refresh this. The alerts actually show up too on um, on the home page. So if you're looking at your task list or something, you can see alerts uh, there too. So you know we can do alerts on people, properties, businesses, uh, permits, uh, really the whole nine yards. So um, and when you when you see it under your task list, we'll show all alerts related to that file. So it could be people alerts, property alerts, all that sort of stuff. Uh, rental registrations. So 
Urbana's uh, does rental registrations and um, let me log out here. Jim, while you're doing that, one quick question. To, to import information from other entities like the county or, or somewhere else, are those included in the regular fees to use CitizenServe or is that an additional cost? That's actually so included. If we did, it, oh, go ahead, Ray. Oh, I was just while you're looking, I would say, you know, anytime we bring those those things over in batch, we can get a file from uh, from the county. We'll bring it over and update it as often as you guys can get that file to us, and that's all included. Same with any GIS layers. Just get the okay. uh, the shape files of the KML, KMZ files, and we'll update that as frequently as you can get those to us. It's all included. Okay. So um, this is the Urbana portal. And, uh, you know, we're actually uh, working on their implementation now, so it's okay if I mess it up. But um, the uh, um, if I go to log in, I can, you know, we can do different services. Um, you can search on things. I don't want to get into that. I'm just going to jump in and log in. So there, this is really, how do I, how do I register? Well, first off, I might register as a citizen or a tenant, you know, so we've got two registration types here, and you can have as many as you want. Um, when you pick that, it'll pull up the fields and the required fields for that contact type, and we can do custom fields with those too. So I already have a login, so I'm going to log in, and uh, so so now I can I can view my request here if I want, and I can. Um, update information. I'm not going to show you the scheduling um, piece because they didn't have it enabled. Um, but I'm going to show you that when we do the building, um, the building inspection. So that's uh, kind of wait for your screen to refresh there. So this is the one that we did. This is kind of the file that we were working with, and um, we don't actually right now for code enforcement cases we show violations. You can that's an option. Um, I can upload documents, leave messages, and then I, if I enable scheduling and inspection, uh, I can I would see that here. Um, we can see reviews for approval, um, any documents. So here's my um, my violation notice, uh, and I can see inspections too. So I can kind of see um, when inspections are scheduled and stuff like that. So. Um, so let's do add one. So I'm going to just show you what that looks like. And now we're a HTML5 responsive design. Um, if you go kind of down to the, you know, smartphone type of view, um, you know, we kind of shrink into um, that form factor, and that includes for the applications. So I'm going to go to business licenses, and you can name these whatever you want, but I'm going to do apply online, and here's my rental property registration. Um, I'm going to put in that we're doing a rental property, and my business name is Tim's Second Apartment. And and then we're going to have you can select whether you want to have uh, property validation um, on your file types. You know you can do it differently for each different file type. Um, I'm in it, this one here, we're looking for a verified address, so we're going to search the property table. Um, I'll say that it's an apartment building, um, and again, this form, you know, it looks good on a, on a smartphone. So um, I'm going to pick that, and I'll just, you know, for the owner, I'm just going to pick myself. If I wanted to add a new contact, I can. And it kind of, this all depends on how you want to manage your contacts. If you've got insurance companies and mortgage companies and stuff like that that are also doing licensing through your system, um, you know, this is probably the best way to do it. If, if you've got a situation where um, the, the applicant is in charge of giving you the correct address and updating the address, then we might just have, like, you know, that address information as a custom field in CitizenServe so that um, the applicants can manage it. So this one's got some required fields, a number of buildings. Usually um, we're going to, uh, anything that's required in terms of the fees, we're going to make it required. And then this one's got the sort of, you know, drop down list box to kind of pick who's the mailing address. Um, I'll just say owner. And we can, all the uh, forms in CitizenServe can be saved by the citizens for later, or you can uh, just click submit. 
and you get a template email saying, hey, your rental registration has been received. And um, in this particular instance, they don't, they don't ask for payment up front, um, but we'll, we'll see that on the, on the building permit when we do that, because um, it actually asks for the plan check or the plan review fees. So, um, the, uh, and I'll, I'll show you this real quick, just so you can kind of um, see what I was talking about. Um, if I go into Urbana here as a system user, I can go into the portal configuration and, um, you know, if I go down to licensing here, I can, um, I can basically see um, if I want to al allow people to do inspections, and here's my payments, right, we don't have that enabled, so um, I would go down here and say, I'm going to say, I'm gonna, anybody, anybody associated with the license can request inspections or only applicants. If I select that, then I'm going to get my, you know, kind of a uh, list down here of days, and I can select the number of total inspections, you know, where I'm going to limit um, the inspections. Um, I can also pick different times. You know, a lot of our jurisdictions, they do, you know, just only a.m., p.m., or they just take the inspections and they put them into what we call the unassigned inspection queue, and then somebody... Um, schedules them or you can actually allow a specific time um, and if you do that we kind of you know um, put a valid times in here and then we have cutoffs and then you can manage your non-inspection dates um, right here uh, the other thing that's uh, applicable is you sometimes you, when you're in the renewal process you want the uh, applicants to be able to edit their application to update addresses and information about their property. So that's kind of down here, um, license status options, status change notifications, and edit license options. So the portal is very configurable, and here I can go in and I can say if it's a certain status, the only status we have right now is online applications been received, but I could, I could go in here and say um, I'm going to allow the um, applicant, you know, based on a resubmittal status or renewal status, I'm going to allow them to edit the application. Um, and then we can also control the behavior of the field so that, you know, if they want to edit, they can edit some of the fields but not all of them. So, you know, maybe we only take some, like a federal tax ID numbers might be something that you take once. You're not going to let them change it um, later because it shouldn't change. Um, now, we can also mask uh, personal um, information like that too. So that's kind of the rental registration. On the staff side, I'm going to defer to the uh, building permit application because that's got a review process set up on it. Our licensing and permitting is almost identical except uh, licensing has got a um, renewal kind of process and permits you typically uh, expire. So, um, so for, we're going to skip the scheduling inspections um, till the you know till we get to the number four until we get to the building permit because we're going to schedule an inspection on that and I'm going to re request an inspection online and stuff like that. So, um, and we have a um, we have a built-in IVR system and uh, SMS text-based system too. So that's something that's available. We use a cloud-based um, uh, aspect prophecy platform. Uh, it supports voice XML and CC XML and um, is kind of really tightly integrated with, with our back end, you know, so uh, we can just kind of almost no limit to what we can, what we can do with the IVR. Uh, and it supports text, so if people want to text their license number or registration number in or their building permit number in with an inspect inspection code or in a requested time, the system kind of has a text dialogue with them. It can get back with them with a text saying, you know, your number's invalid, stuff like that. Um, 
So plan review tracking. So we're going to start here um, on the, and this is where we'll kind of show some of the features that uh, we haven't shown yet. Um, I've got to log off. And I'm going to go to our kind of demo, demo jurisdiction portal. And again, I can register and all that sort of stuff, but I'm just going to jump in. And we can, and we we show all the, you know, stuff that you might want to show out there. You can do, uh, um, uh, basically, you know, if you want to apply for a permit, you can. Um, well, I wanted to go to the permitting side. We can put all your submittal requirements out there. These are all. Um, editable pages. They're just HTML, um, and there's a built-in HTML editor, and we can set up any kind of links and stuff like that. Um, we can also do reports. You know, so if you want to do reports um, on the portal, you, any reports that we do or you do, you can uh, publish this information out on the portal if you want. Um, so that's all available, and we can do things like you know special lookups. Like here's a property lookup, and you know, this, this will look up zoning for my property and stuff like that. Um, I wanted to show you that just because they don't have to be under reports. You can set up a link to that report. I had that here under property lookup. So there's kind of a uh, little note there. So let's do, um, let's do a permit. Uh, you're, you know, we've got, again, the HTML5 uh, responsive design. This is the same portal we were looking at before all our customers are on the same version of the software. Um, so if I click on apply online, it's going to ask me to log in. And I'm going to log in here. And so here's this will be your permit types. And um, we've got a building permit, I'll say new construction. You know, I can view my submittal requirements again here for this specific permit and subtype combination. And I put in some information. Now this is where you know we can have projects in Citizen Serve. Like if I want to add a permit to an existing um, project that's going on, I can do that, or I can say it's a new project. If I pick add ex existing project, it's going to ask me for my permit number, file number. Um, I think it'll actually, since I'm logged in, it'll show me a list of what I got going on. Um, so I'm going to put in um, part of the address here. Just uh, and this is going to pull up my address, kind of like before. Like I said, they're very similar. Except you know, now we're looking at um, the application for a building permit. So um, the applications can be dynamic. You know, if I say one here, it's going to ask me for information about the first structure, and that's it. If I say two. You know, it's going to ask me for two. These are very easy to build and modify in the system. And um, so I'm going to go back to one here. We'll pick these are, this is kind of a, a pretty common. Uh, we're going to calculate the valuation based on the square footage and the ICC tables. But we're also going to ask the contractor for their estimate. Um, and then we've got an integrated licensing in this example. Um, we also can do links in the application. So if you want to put in a link to an external GIS system or state contractor database or you know those types of things, we can link to any documents, any external websites. Um, it's just a HTTP call. Uh, we this one's got integrated licensing, and we can do help too any on all the fields. Um, so. Let me just type in Acme, and this is going to pull up all licensed contractors that match. So if I type in Smith, it's going to give me a list of all the Smiths, and um, I can pick that. And we can put the submittal documents really anywhere in the application. So um, here we've got you know four different separate things we're asking for, but it could be one button that allows people to upload a lot of stuff. And we can also control the acceptable uh, file types. And so let me. Uh, the uh, site plan. You can do this with licensing too. All the license applications can have. You can get a copy of someone's driver's license or their, you know, whatever um, 
types of forms or affidavits you might want. And I'll just pick that. I'm just going to pick a couple things here. And you can make these required or not required. They're not required um, in this example. And then down here at the bottom, I kind of have a, a signature field. You know, so sometimes our customers require signatures for certain permit types. Um, and we've got some uh, language down here. One of the really important things about the online applications capability in CitizenServe is that we, um, we can decide the behavior of the fields. We can say only show these fields on the staff side or only show them on the citizen side. This one's an example of one we're only showing on the citizen side. And I can go in and sign this. And the same as kind of what we were looking at before. I could save for later if I want. I'll just click Submit. So this is a um, very similar process that you would see for rental registrations or per any permits or licenses coming in. We're asking them here to pay for their plan check fee. You know, so when we look at the fee schedule, we can take we can take no fees and collect them later when we issue the license or permit. We can ask for application fees or plan check fees. Um, and, and then we can also ask for the whole amount. Um, so this is going to be integrated with whatever payment processor you use. Um, you know, in, in this example, you know, each jurisdiction could have their own permit process or own payment processors. And um, in addition to that, I think we, we support doing uh, different payment processors for each department. You know, so different departments in a larger jurisdiction can have their own payment processor. So, um, and you can pay for, in some payment processors, we can support coming in and paying for like 10 permits at once, you know, so that's, it's kind of depends on the um, particular um, capabilities of that payment processor. So I wanted to look really quick here at um, something. So are there any questions so far? Or? So, um, so what I wanted to show you really quick before we jump over to the staff side and look at the processing there is um, I'm going to take a look at one of these permits and try to see if I can find one that's got some activity on it. So this is the permit application. Here I can request inspections. You know, so if I click on request inspection, this is what it looks like. Um, you know, if I want to do a footing inspection, I can put in the required date. This one's got AMPM, and I can put some notes in. So that's one thing that we wanted to look at. The, the users can also see the review. So, you know, here's my review process that's going on. And uh, you can have private uh, review activities. Um, and, but you can also have uh, review activities where they can see your review comments. So that's sort of um, something that's available. And um, same thing with documents. I can see all my documents. Um, you know, as we're going through the staff side, just keep in mind that inspection reports, uh, those types of things, you know, the permit itself, you know, all these things are going to be able to, um, can be made to be seen by the um, applicant. And here's my, you know, here's an inspection with some inspection comments, right? So let's log out. And we're going to log in as the person who's receiving uh, this information. And one of the things that's really um, critical um, in licensing and permitting, having the electronic relationship with citizens is um, basically this concept of, you know, who am I going to tell that the citizen did something? Right. So if you ask them to upload a document, you don't want to, you know, go back to the file two weeks later and find out that they uploaded it two weeks ago and the ball's been in your court, right? So if I go over here to my portal configuration, I can see for permitting and licensing, um, they both have this, but if I go down, there's a uh, user notifications and assignments down here, and I can click on that. And this basically is a matrix of, of if anything happens on my portal, I want someone to know about it. So we can uh, create activities and people's task lists. Uh, we can also send emails. You know, so here for each permit type, you know, if there's a new application, who do we tell? If it's been modified online, who do we tell? Um, if the payment's been made, and if 
inspections are requested, we can tell someone. And we have um, messages online, also documents online. So oftentimes for documents, it's probably going to be a responsible user that we would notify. Um, that's the person that's responsible for that file. Um, we also have system user and current user, I think. And we have an unassigned activity queue, you know, which each department can kind of have their own unassigned activity queue. And then things that come in that haven't been assigned yet, they can just open the queue and make assignments. So let's, uh, let's log in as uh, our guy who gets the new applications. And you know, here's my list. I don't do. I don't ever finish anything in demo world. So down at the very bottom is the, the permit we just got. So that's this one down here at the bottom. And it's the activity that comes in as online permit application. And I can see there's alerts on the property and also on the person, the one of the contractors, right? And that's kind of cool. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go look at the permit. So here's the permit, which is just like a license. In CitizenServe, we've got our form down here. Um, we did a calculation on the valuation. Here's the math up here in the upper right-hand corner of the uh, of the valuation. And you know, here's the custom fields that are part of the um, application. And then we've got some fields down here that we only show on the staff side. So here I can say I'm going to take the estimated construction cost to do the fees as opposed to um, uh, the valuation. So, so, um, and then the fees are down here. Um, we can take payments. Um, we can allocate payments. We can add manual fees. Um, our fees generally are very much, much more complicated than this. You know, there might be 20 or 30 uh, line items. We can do fees based on other fees. It's all done in a fee table. And the most, one of the most powerful things about citizen service, all the custom fields that we do for the inspection forms and the, the application forms can be used. You know, we can track history um, of those fields when they're changed. We can um, use them in reports. We can use them in the fee table. Um, you know, for example, square footage is used in this for fees. And, you know, we just basically select that, hey, you know, and then based on the range and some values, we ca we calculate it. So, so the um, that's one of the cool things. If you put a custom field on a form, you can use it all throughout CitizenServe on your notices, letters, reports, um, in the fee table, stuff like that. So, so this this is the form here, and I'm going to just do a payment real quick. I'll just show you what that looks like. So, I'm going to take a payment on the staff side. Uh, we'll say we got a uh, check here. Uh, we've got a contact listing here that kind of shows us everybody involved in the project. So, I can kind of say who we got the check from, and I'll put in my plan check fees. Oops. And we'll save that. So that puts our payment in. So we can have multiple payments. Payments that come in on the portal are going to show up with their confirmation number um, down there. And so let's take a look at uh, um, this is the this is a project. So if I want to add another permit to this project, I can do that. I just got to go over here to add. Um, permit and I can add another permit type you know so that's you know if they're building a pool also you know I'm gonna have multiple permits um, in here uh, this is just to copy the project name if we wanted to um, but let's get out of that you want to do that um, so I'm gonna go down here to my recently accessed files I thought it was 22 uh, let me check on that Nope, 21. All right, so, um, so basically the review route uh, got kicked off, and the, we can do support doing one or more review routes, special review routes. Um, you know, all the review routes are made up of activities that you know are, can be inherited or owned by departments. So, like my fire application review is owned by that activity types owned by the fire department, um, or I can inherit it from a higher level. Um, this is going kind of through this process of the building department looks at it, and then we're going to do plan review in um, various departments. Then we come back to building, 
and we determine a required inspection, and then we issue the permit. That's kind of the, the process. And if there's more than one permit, more than one review process, you can kind of select which one you're specifically wanting to look at. Sometimes there's you know four or five permits in here, and you just want to look at the review routes related to one. Um, and these these exist kind of throughout the um, uh, all. That's your question. Okay, so um, basically, let's take a look at completing one of these review routes. Um, and I'm going to go in here. We've got application intake right here that Morgan Katz is supposed to do, right? And they're all going to be similar, so I might skip over um, doing the whole review. Um, is that'll take a lot of time. So I'm going to log in over here as Morgan Katz. And when the review route gets kicked off, she's kind of the first person. We can do any combination of parallel or sequential activities. Uh, each activity can, you know, you can select multiple activities that, you know, it doesn't start until those are complete. So uh, Morgan has uh, on her list our permit down here. And if you click on the activity, it takes you right to the activity. So I'm going to click on that. And we'll put a completion date in here. We'll say we got it done. Now, this is really common. Um, instead of having a form, you know, we did look at the form for Miriam, Kansas, and that long inspection form. You can do that if you want. Um, we also do review comments. And this is pretty commonly used, inspection comments or review comments. And you can click on the comment book here and just go in and add your comments, you know, kind of common comments and corrections. And you can have different categories. It's automatically taken us to the category that matches the activity. How do you so, make a, how do you add one that's not there? How do you write one? Yeah, you know, there's a little new one right here. It, it's a yeah. insert comment. You just click on that and you just type in your comment. Um, and you can put in the numbering there sort of for ordering. And there's another feature here um, that we're, I'm not showing in this demo, but it's it's you can to the review comments you can also have a status so that you know you can go through these later and close some of them out and leave some of them open. But if you're creating one there, will it remember it the next time so you don't have to recreate that comment? You know, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not. It's very easy to add comments. Um, I'm not sure if if the freeform ones that we have here are going to be automatically saved into the categories. And the, the comments are actually um, owned and and uh, uh, kind of owned by each department or inherited from higher level departments. So each department can kind of have their own comments. I don't I don't know if we um, if we do that. But Ray, can you write that down as something we should follow up on? Yeah, I, I was going to say, I, I, I think, no, I mean, if it's something that you want to become part of the standard comment, yes. then, you know, that can that can easily be added. You know what I'm saying? If you're doing a, a comment enough, you're like, this should just be part of every one, and we could yes. add it, and you could also, once it was there, you could also delete it. You know what I'm saying? Does it have to be added administratively, or is that something that we would have the freedom to manipulate? You would have the freedom in, to manipulate that, but it's all covered under your service agreement. You would just put a service request in, it would be done, you know, that day. 80% of the time, the service request would come in that day. So yeah, there's, a, you, there's, you, you absolutely yeah, could do it, or you yeah. could just put a service request in and have it done. And Yeah, Ray, what you're asking is, is that if I put a comment in here, is it going to add that to my comments list, right? And, you know, I don't, I don't know that we currently do that, so we have to ask um, somebody who knows more than I do. And there is one way to handle it that, you know, is, is you know, when we generate reports, um, we can do processing. So, you know, like we can say, hey, you know, um, you know, for, for any new comments that are not in the comments list, we're going to add that. But we would, you know, that would happen um, when we generate the review. So, so, um, so basically, and, and it, you know, we have hundreds of customers, so, I just want to so do it. it's really possible that we've done that before. So I don't, you know, we'll follow up on it. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and save my comments. And then what we typically do at this point is we're going to send out um, an email. And this this example, we we have a template that's a, called the informal uh, plan review comments. And and then at the end, 
we have this uh, plan review report, which rolls up all the comments from all the reviewers. So I'm just going to say um, informal. And then we, when we send an email, we can um, basically uh, pick who we want to have the email go to. And this is going to, when, like when we printed a letter before, it showed us everybody involved. This is showing us everybody involved externally, the contractors, and then also the internal review team. You know, anybody who's involved in a review activity. So we'll go ahead and click on um, just that we're going to send this to the applicant. Um, I can add attachments. This is very similar to um, what we looked at um, on, the, on the iPad. You know, I can take a picture here if I wanted to or um, those types of things. Um, and so I can attach documents if I want externally. And then uh, let's preview this. And this is kind of typically what we do is we're going to pull information off of the activity form and and we're going to you know put that into the template. So, you know, that's kind of a and I can edit this if I want or I'll just send it out. So that's going to that's kind of like I went through my review activity. When I save this, it takes me sort of to an expanded view of everybody's comments. Um, and now it's sort of been sent over to Liam now that the initial review was complete. Um, so if we jump back over to Liam, um, so uh, so when we're back over here on on Liam's uh, page, you know we can see that he's been he's had two activities added um, down here and. Uh, let me just jump in. I'll just do. I'm gonna um, just do one of these or two of them. So this one here, I'll just say it's approved, and we can jump in and add comments. This one's a diff he's in a different. Um, well, I think he's in the same department, but he, you know, we can pick different comments. The comments all support uh, HTML, so you can have bold comments, you can have red comments, you can have links within your comments that go to like an external code book or some other more information about this particular issue um, so that you know that's one of the cool things about the common uh, comments and corrections um, feature and so I'm just going to save this one we'll go down and do this other one uh, required inspections this is kind of some people do this some people don't but um, you know this basically allows me to go in and, and pick what inspections might be required uh, for this, and I'll go ahead and save that. Um, and we'll save that with that, and we'll save this. And so, so we can kind of go through the whole process here, and then in the end, um, you know, we've got that uh, plan review report, um, and this actually has to be associated with an activity. So, uh, I can pick uh, who I want to send it to. Send it to our applicant, and um, we'll do a preview. And this is, again, this kind of is a roll-up. You know, it kind of gives us the, the different reviewers. You know, the short story on the, the activities um, and the review is that, you know, we can do common comments and corrections. We can do forms. Um, we can also do any kind of output templates, um, any combination of graphics, fonts, um, and then those types of things. So uh, let's go ahead and save that. The, um, there's also a markup tool that's in the system. And so, you know, while you're going through the review process, that can be used. Um, I'll do this elevations document here. And we're actually working on a new version of this, so it's it's um, a little bit under construction. But we support doing some stamps, you know, so you can have different stamps if you want. Um, the objects all support doing uh, uh, a comment book. So the, the common corrections and stuff like that that I was showing you earlier, we're going to have that integrated with the markup. You know, so you'll be able to go in here and pick um, uh, comments that relate to and add comments that relate to uh, your specific markup. Uh, I think we do uh, shapes and stuff like that too, and um, you can do highlighting, add text. Um, I was messing around with this earlier, and uh, actually, you can use the speech-to-text feature, too, if you want, um, on, on the iPad. And then you can add common comments, uh, really, to all the objects is how it's set up now. And then we've got a calibration tool. Um, and uh, the calibration tool in a, 
uh, measurement tool too, so you can uh, use that. So let's jump out of this and um, so let's do an inspection. So on our on our permit that we've been working on here, um, you know, let's say we approved it, and let's let's print out a permit. So I'm, I clicked on the little document icon there, and we can do uh, conditions kind of throughout the system. You know, when you schedule an inspection, we can have conditions there. But for printing official documents, that's a common place to have a condition. Um, so basically here, you know, we could have a warning saying that the permit's not paid for or the contractor's license is expired, you know, those types of things. Um, so let's go ahead and save that. So we printed the permit. Let's do some inspections. Um, I'm going to go over here to uh, add inspection. Now each department has their own um, uh, inspection types, or you can inherit inspection types from a, the organization or a higher level department. So, you know, I'm in a building, and these are going to be the building inspections, and um, I'm going to pick footing. Now, this is an event in CitizenServe, which is different than a task. A task is, you know, not a calendar event. Um, so when I click on dot, dot, dot over here for the date, it's going to pull up the calendar. We can do a multi, this is device and browser independent JavaScript based calendar. And uh, you can have different categories of inspectors that you kind of group them by when you kind of do your multi, uh, multiple inspector view. And if anything was on anybody's calendar here, you could see the inspection and the property that they're going to and all that sort of stuff. You can pick a different inspector up here if you want. Um, I'm going to leave it with Liam. I'll click OK. And um, then we'll save this. This is going to show up on Liam's calendar over here. And we can click on the calendar. And this is what you'll see. Um, and you can drill down right from the calendar, which is kind of cool. And there's a month view um, that you can go into. And you know you can drill down from the month view, too. So that's kind of cool. Um, you can pick other people's calendars that uh, you might have access to um, and those types of things. So um, let's go ahead and do this uh, inspection real quick. And you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to my handy iPad here. I will do it on there just so that you can see what that looks like. And I'll log in as a different guy here. So this is my calendar um, in the, you know, on the building side. It's the same thing as we were looking at with the rental inspection. And um, I can click on my footing inspection, and that's going to pull the inspection up for me. Um, you know, here I can use the speech to text and some of the other things that we've looked at. Um, I'm going to put in a, a date and a status and, you know, finger-friendly version of the control here. I'll say it passed. Um, and then I, I'm using the comment book here. So, you know, it's pulling up all my footing comments, and I can jump in here and check these. There's my iPad's really kind of being weird today, but um, I think somebody dropped it on its head. Um, so, so then I can um, I can enter the checklist in here, and let me see if I can save that. And I put my comments in. Um, I'll save those, and then uh, and then typically what people will do is they'll just from the field they can send out a uh, um, email address or email, um, just like we were doing before with the review, except it's an inspection. And I'll say I'm going to send out my inspection report. And we'll click on dot, dot, dot there. And um, I'll save that. Now, this is the same as before. I can, uh, I can add attachments if I want. Um, and if I wanted to take a picture, um, I can you know, just select a camera. And it's going to allow me to um, take a picture there. So I'll click on cancel and go back over here. So, and then I'll click on preview. So this is the inspection report that we're sending out. Um, we can attach it, documents. You can have in your inspection form, you can have a, the little submittal document button. If you want specific information uploaded as part of that, you can also generally attach to the um, to the activity. So there's a little attach icon there that allows me to take a photo uh, or select files. So you can attach to the 
the form you can attach to the activity and you can also send attachments on in your email so um, so that's the inspection and we did that we'll jump back to the office here um, you know once we go through you know our inspections and we can do conditions on inspections so you know if they try to schedule their final inspection and they haven't passed their footing inspection we can um, put a condition in there that um, prevents them from doing that or, or warns them about it. So let's jump back to our permit and you can kind of, we're all real time, you know, so it's, here's my inspection report that was sent out and um, here's my inspection and it passed and then um, I can go over here and generate like a certificate of occupancy once it's finaled out. And this document's, um, you know, kind of a, example, you know, signatures and uh, graphics and stuff. And, it, you know, this is kind of a semi-complicated document because it's got a frame and all that kind of stuff. But if I wanted to add something to this, I can. Um, and I'll save that. So this is, you know, kind of a, um, that's the editor. You know, it's just a industry standard uh, HTML. JavaScript based editor that's device and browser independent. So uh, so that's kind of the and we looked at the owner side, you know, kind of the, the applicant um, on the portal. So we'll kind of skip over that last part there. And so the mailing notices for a buffer, that's kind of a built in standard capability um, in citizen serve and I don't know why I logged out, I'm supposed to be logged into that guy. Um, and I'll kind of start out here in administration, kind of, um, if I go to my building department, now I don't have rights to everything. I, you know, if I go to fire, I don't have any rights. So we, you know, we can barely specifically confine people to their departments and stuff. Um, I've got a notice in here. We do all sorts of different types of email notices, merge templates, and stuff like, stuff like that. And this is, this is a, I called it an abutter notice, but you can have, each department can have its own notices that are, you know, proximity uh, merge reports. And um, you can share your notices. Like if I created it at the organization level, I could share it with all the departments if I wanted to. Um, this is a, you know, proximity template that shows up whenever you run the proximity report. And you can have more than one if you want. Um, and we've got, these are all the letter types that we have in citizen serve. So there's quite a bit. Um, and our letters can do processing. So, you know, what we call a query letter basically is um, a letter that's, that's kind of uh, works with a stored procedure in SQL Server. And so we can update files and, you know, do all sorts of really cool stuff. We can get different kinds of data out of the system. Um, the, uh, when you do the letters, uh, there's um, a lot of information you can pull out. So I can pull out, you know, custom fields. I can pull in um, information from my permits and stuff like that into the letters. You know, like if I wanted to add something here, um, I can pick, like if I wanted to throw in my a permit description, I can just do that and I can just throw it in here and just pick paste. So it's really easy to create these templates and um, work with the data that's in the database, including the custom fields. But that's the abutter notice. And um, over here in reports, it's kind of tied in with the uh, proximity search. So here's my thing, I'm 300 feet and um, if I put in an address, now I can put in an address, a permit number, a file number, a parcel number, and I can choose my output. Like if I want to see it on a map, I can do that. So here's my uh, subject property um, and surrounding properties on a map. Um, and, you know, just like we were looking at before, I mean, I can go to satellite view and street view and all that kind of stuff with the reports. Um, and we'll jump back over here to map. And so that's the map view, right? I can list this as a um, 
report. So here's my proximity report. It's just a list of the um, addresses. This can be exported to Excel. So I got my Excel file down here. And we'll open that up. So this is, you know, if you wanted to merge it with something else or give it to somebody that's going to send out a legal notice or something, you can do that. So there's my Excel file. Um, and then uh, you can also just merge it with a letter. So, and that's one of the, the templates. So you can have more than one template. And each department can kind of have their own templates. So this is the letter, you know. And I incorporated a signature on there. That was just one of the things. And this is really simple. I mean, we can do really complex uh, forms with the HTML editor, and if I print it, you know, it'll show it'll show the page break in there for me. So that's sort of a, um, so that's the merge capability there. And so the parent-child relationship, we've kind of covered part of that. Um, you know, the, the permits are all part of a, part of a project. And probably uh, looking out in the real world is probably worthwhile. Um, so let's find a, this is probably, a, I'm going to do a planning. I'm going to find something in planning that's got multiple like zoning permits and stuff. And if I go here to my types, I'll see all the types that they have in the system. This is Spanish Fork, Utah. And they have, um, and I think they're about 35, 40,000 citizens, and they have about 20, 20 users in CitizenServe. And I'm going to look for site plan applications because I don't think they have that many of them. So where's the Petco? Well, I can I can search on this. You can we're in a browser, so you can really search on. You know, anything that's on the page you pull up in a report. So I searched on Petco. Um, and this is the project I wanted to look at. So we've got, you know, we could have in the same project, we could have, you know, multiple like zoning amendments and stuff. And then we could have additional building permits and all that sort of stuff. Um, if I click on one of these here, it kind of shows me that permit. Um, you know, they have a one button to upload a lot of documents. Um, and this is kind of the application and the fees, pretty simple stuff. Um, but this is one that's got more than one. So if I go to the reviews, and they do pretty complex reviews here, um, this is planning. And so here we've got a lot of departments involved. Uh, but we also can do activities for like development review committees. We can put together um, uh, the minutes, you know, the calendar agenda for the council meetings and committee meetings, and we can uh, take the minutes. So they probably have minute notes in this one. So here they've got, you know, Chris moved to approve the Wachimajigi, and then there were some conditions they put in here, and then it passed. So they can, we have customers that put the, you know, the whole thing up on their, their website. They'll put their agendas and minutes and stuff up there um, in the reports. So, um, so this is kind of what it looks like. You know, there's no inspections on this, but, you know, multiple permits. The other thing that we do that might be relevant is um, the um, we do master permits, right? And, and it's kind of applicable in that, you know, you can, if somebody's doing a development project, you know, you can set up a master permit for that project. And then, you know, when you enter another permit, you just sort of, put that master permit number in there and it pulls all the information in for you from the master. So um, so that's kind of I, the, the um, there's a couple of things on here that I'm not necessarily sure, you know, how would we, we would do it. I'm pretty, you know, I'm confident we could. The failure to obtain a permit, um, item number four, um, number nine, uh, that's going to start out as a code enforcement case in CitizenServe, um, typically, you know, because you don't have a permit yet. So, but we do know that, you know, you're on that property. So there's, you know, there's the um, ability for us when a permit's uh, printed or a permit's applied for to um, check um, for 
things on that address. So we can do that. Um, I, you know, it's, it's just sort of, there's probably six ways to do it, and um, I'm not, not sure which way you'd want to do it. And then there's also, there's, a, there's, there's some issues with, um, you know, making sure that it's the right, you know, if, if, if there is a failure to obtain a permit, code enforcement case on a property where a permit's just been issued, you know, that might be something where we might want to ask before we close the uh, code case out. So, um, and then the other one is very similar, you know, um, if they get a violation, it's going to be a code case. Um, and then, um, you know, we can, uh, we can link that, you know, but, but only after they, uh, generate a permit, right? So that's sort of, you know, we can, those are things that we can do. It's just there's a lot of process questions around um, number four and number five on nine. So um, so let's look at um, number 10. We'll kind of look at the uh, user situation. And I'm going to log in as a system user. So we've been doing this uh, 14 years. Um, everybody's on the same version of the software, and um, well, we updated a lot with feedback from our customers. So we, we pretty much cover a lot of the different needs um, in terms of rights uh, because they've been developed over a decade and a half. Um, so if I go to building here, I can see my building roles. So I've got a building view only, a building manager, users in building, user and building but no delete rights and I've got a, a user no delete and um, they can edit completed items and that's one of the um, kind of more powerful features in citizen serve we're, we're kind of set up for doing permitting and, and case management and stuff like that so you know there's the obvious can I create files view modify delete um, and then there's delete file, which is another important one. You know, we don't, some people might have rights to delete something, but not everything. And, and then there's another one, which is really important, edit completed items. You know, that's, if I complete an inspection, I don't want anybody changing my inspection after it's been completed, right? So inspection reports, um, any other activities, review types of activities, you can take away people's rights to edit anything that's been closed out or completed. Um, the ability to assign activities is also another capability. I may not want, if I'm the fire department, I may not want the code enforcement department assigning activities to my people. So um, the ability to accept activities um, and also view of department tasks. You know, So those are some of the uh, kind of general features. And they're all departmental. Uh, and not only you know, do we have the organization level, the root level, but you can have sub-departments. Too. So, you know, and I'm not even sure how far down it can go, but it can go pretty far. Um, and then we can have the rights to, you know, uh, manage contacts. This would be like contractors and registered parties and stuff like that. Um, and then we've got a departmental level capability to manage the lookup options, um, things like your templates, drop down list boxes, stuff like that, manage user accounts, and then uh, run reports. Um, from that department. So those are some of the things that uh, um, exist. Now they all roll up into um, a user's rights. Let me find a user here. And so basically, um, we're going to you know, have the ability to kind of give people departmental ac access to, you know, uh, based on their user permitting, business licensing, um, fee tracking, editing payments, uh, general cases, which is kind of request tracking or work orders. Um, there's also uh, access to property lookup table. You know, can you edit or add properties um, in the system? Um, can you add permits across departments? And then also violation tracking is something that's uh, available. Um, you know, we're looking at violations in association with licenses, but we can also make those available for permits. And here's my user. 
here's my roles. I'm a manager, and I've got some other roles here. And it rolls up basically like this. You know, so here's just all my departments um, in the organization, and here's my rights. You know, so it's really a, uh, a matrix of, uh, of rights in the system that kind of gets put together based on the roles that are set up. So, um, so the uh, the tracking um, is one of the cooler features about CitizenServe is um, the custom fields, and so we've got we track history on. So there's a history tab on all the permits um, and cases, licenses, everything like that. So this is the history tab. And so it, it basically gives you everything that's gone on with a file. And this is the one we were just working on, or one of the probably very similar. Um, and we've got notes in here too. But you, you'll notice that there's a lot of custom fields with the applications, you know, things like square footage and um, you know, things on the activities like inspections and stuff like that. If I go to admin here, and I'm going to go to customs, and we'll go down to um, the building department, and we'll look at our building permit. This basically is um, the application form. You know, it's a bunch of text header fields and formatting fields and stuff like that. But we've got our square footage on um, the first structure. So if I click on Edit here. So basically, this is the kind of the options under Custom Fields, right? Um, so I can I can format it with HTML. Here we're turning bold off. Um, we support doing you know a couple dozen uh, types of um, of custom fields, you know, one of them that we might use would be like a permit lookup or file lookup, you know, if we're associating a, a permit number with a, another permit number or a code enforcement case. Uh, document attachments are easy. Um, the signature field that we we're looking at, just the signature field here, you know, so very easy to add these to um, things. But what's really more important is sort of the, the uh, um, ability to control the behavior. So, you know, we can not display things, display them as read-only, um, display as editable, maybe only editable on new entries, so I can't go back and change it. Display it on the portal only, you know, so not, and then I can make it um, required down here. Um, they can be required or not required or required only on the portal. I can select that I want to be able to search on this field, which is really cool, um, and that'll show up on my Advanced search and my quick find is an option. I can mask it if it's a secure field. And then, you know, getting to the question here on, you know, question B on number 10 is I can track changes. So, you know, any of the fields that you create on your applications, your inspection reports, you can actually um, track those changes and the changes will show up in history. And you'll see, and square footage is probably a good example of something. I want to track the changes on that because I want to, it's the fees are based on it. I might want to increase it or decrease it um, in the uh, in the system. So, um, so the escrow scenario, uh, we do we do this a lot of different ways. It kind of depends on um, the customer and how they want to do it. In Spanish Fork, and I, I know that they, they do deposits and refunds, and it's all tracked in the fees. So this is their this is their permit application, and so it's a little more complicated than what we showed in our example. Um, but this is their form. This is a new residential um, construction, and here's my submittal documents down here, and. And then this is their fees, so you can kind of see, you know, uh, you know, we can do crazy fees. This is, you know, 20 different fee types, um, and we can do surcharges, you know, fees based on other fees, stuff like that. But down here, this is a deposit, and so this is, you know, kind of 
Um, one way that you can track things is just a, a line item uh, in your fees, and it can be added manually. And they probably have a, a credit. This, these are all their manual fees. Um, so they have quite a bit of manual fees in here. And one of them is probably a deposit, which is right here. So you can do it that way um, and then refund it. And then I um, another, and I wanted to show you one thing while we're here because we got a little bit of time. Their, um, their permit, let me see if I can find a permit in here. Um, uh, so I got a lot of inspection reports on this, and so but this is their permit. And I just wanted to show it to you, just because everybody does things differently. And this is the they have their first is is a listing of um, kind of information about the project and the building official signature, and then two page two is required inspections, you know, and then page three is a financial summary. That's kind of their. Um, their permit, so there can be a, a, a wide variety in, in how we do that stuff. The um, so let's jump out of here and let's go look at a more complex. Uh, um, now this is O'Fallon, um, Missouri, and you know I, if I were you guys, I'd talk to them, uh, O'Fallon and St. Charles, because O'Fallon's in St. Charles County, and St. Charles County is a customer, and O'Fallon's a customer. And they're trying to get more jurisdictions in the county um, to use citizen serve so that they can have you know some commonality and um, I think the county's trying to lead that up um, and we're actually working with them on a, uh, uh, it like our portal is you know great for you know uh, the citizens um, and, and and for contractors but the you know you get contractors that you work with all the time so we're kind of doing a, a another app which is sort of a multi-jurisdictional um, contractor portal so that the contractors only have to register in one place and um, can see all the things that are going on in the multiple jurisdictions that they might have going on um, so this is we had um we had basically a, a, a need here. This is uh, one of our users. Um, and I wanted to pull up a file number here that's got a... Uh, now, what they did, um, we had, did it for them in their setup, is we set up a escrow, um, escrow held uh, file or kind of permit type is what it is. And so, so this, is a, this is a project here that's got quite a bit going on it's a commercial project um, and you know here you can see there's you know it's a project and there's multiple permits in this project but one of the um, things in the project here is this EH um, which is basically their escrow held form that they fill out um, and they just basically will add this permit type to the project um, when there's an escrow that's required and um, you know they have basically information about the escrow um, escrow notes um, and they actually have a, a very detailed <laughs> detailed form that they fill out um, here um, with all the uh, information that they wanted to collect um, uh, and so that's sort of what's showing up here um, in the um, uh, on this form, so but they use our they use our fees to to calculate the escrow due and to generate an invoice and and to basically track um, all the escrows. So if we kind of take a look at this is a lot of information, um, but the simple stuff would be like they you know they determine that there's an escrow due on a project. You know probably part of their is part of their review process. That might be a step in the review process that you know. Are we going to do escrow on this? And and this is the invoice. So we we generate their invoices um, out of the system, and you know tell them how much they need to deposit and how they need to make their deposit and stuff like that. So um, and then we you know we'll give them a receipt. This is uh, it's probably not an escrow receipt. They they have their um, they upload their escrow agreement. So this is the escrow agreement that 
is in the system. So, so we can get pretty complicated with the escrow. We can, um, you know, make a simple deposit and a credit um, during the project. I, I've also seen us do things where we, um, when they make a deposit, you know, reinspections or additional charges kind of get charged against that deposit. Um, you know, so here's an escrow agreement that was, uh, they uploaded in the system with a copy of the check. And, um, and the only other thing that's kind of relevant, I think, here is that, you know, there's a bunch of escrow reports that this user has. And um, there's an escrow held report. And uh, this kind of gives a summary of, of actually what they've got here is they've got their, you know, the permit number, which is their escrow, the file number, the project it belongs to. And then over here, we've got a link in the report to take some right to the, um, the escrow agreement. So um, that's kind of a, so we're really doing the invoicing for the escrow. We're tracking it. We're tracking the actual um, signed agreements with the escrows, um, all that sort of stuff. And this is, looks like it's quite a big, uh, quite a big list in the system. And you can drill down on these too. So, you know, I can, if I want to see this project over here on the left, I can click on it and pull that project up. So, and here's the permits on that project. And I'm going to go back to my report here. If I want to look at another one, I can click on that and pull that up and um, kind of keeps, it's going to open. And this report's designed to open the drill down in another um, and another tab in the browser. So, and they, I think they had another kind of escrow track, and they've got escrow open cases only. Probably is another, just another report. So, so that kind of covers what I had on the escrows. Um, we can do it really simple, or we can make it really hard. So. Anything we want to see more of today, or? Yeah, can you uh, circle back to reporting and show how uh, oh. we create a custom report and filter <laughs> things and so forth? Yeah, I messed that up. I think that, uh, where was that? Um, okay, reporting, let's go and take a look at that. So, with CitizenServe, we include unlimited support with a subscription. So at any time, you can um, submit a support request, and our staff will create any report you want in any format you want it in. Um, the, uh, we started out doing that you know, 14 years ago, and, and we still do that today. Um, we just use SQL to write the reports. There's a different ways to view the reports, you know, so you can do maps and charts and stuff. Um, generally, we do the reports the same day as the request. So, you know, it's not something you got to wait a month for. Um, all, of our, all of our staff are trained in SQL and HTML. So, now, let's say I want to do my own report. Um, here's a customer. This is a supervisor. Um, up in Somerville, Massachusetts, and I've got a report here called Permits Issued on a Map. And so this is going to show me a map, and um, let's, they, got, they have zillions of permits. So I'm going to go and look at only January. And I'll click on search. So this is going to give me my permits issued on a map, and this is probably a, a report our staff did. You know, and you can go to satellite view, and you can drill down on these um, different uh, projects right off the map here, and I can kind of go over here and see the project, um, and I can go back over to my map and click on different things and open them up. So there's a lot of drill down capabilities and features like that. So let's say that I wanted to create that report. Um, and I didn't want to submit submit a support request. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to go over here to, um, and I can share my reports too. So that's something that, uh, but I have to add a folder. I got to be looking at a report. So if I wanted to share this, uh, there's a share button here. 
and I think that was one of the questions. I can pick who I want to share it with, and and then which folder I'm going to put it in, um, in the target or the destination. So you can kind of create your own folders and um, organize your reports how you want to do it, right? But let's do. Uh, and go back to reports and here's our wizard you know kind of a creative report wizard so I'm going to do uh, Jim's test uh, permits on a map and I can pick which folder I want to put it in and uh, and I can pick the display type so I can say I want I'm doing a chart or a list or a map and um, we also do a lot of merge uh, reports and so you can do a, a merge template. Basically, you create the template over in the HTML editor, and then you can just mer pair it with your report. Um, and so you can do letters. And it's really cool because um, when we do reports, like if you send out a letter on all your expired permit notices, you can easily say, add this to the files. So you can see exactly what's been sent out, when it was sent out, and stuff like that. Um, I can add my add a report to my home page. It kind of shows up on my links so that I don't have to dig through my reporting folders to find it. So here's where I select the data. And we, we organize the data for you. So you don't have to know anything about, you know, the technology. You just have to know about the information you want. Um, and we were talking about permits. So I'm going to select permits. Um, and here's where I'm going to be able to kind of select different information. So let's say I, I definitely want my file number. Um, and then I'm going to, here's where you can pick custom fields. I can put custom fields in my reports, kind of cool. Um, I'm going to say I want permits. So I want my permit number, definitely my permit type, subtype, work description. I'm going to query by issue date, so I'll pick that too. Um, maybe amount paid, you know, so I can go through and pick, you know, information about the applicant. Um, you know, maybe I want their mobile phone number in there or something like that. Um, and so, you know, I can go through and pick the information I want, then I can establish my query parameters. And I'm going to do issue dates uh, greater than 2017. And I'm going to go down here and put in that I want my, this is a map report, so we're going to have like a legend on there. And I'll, I'll say permit type. And that's kind of it. This is going to um, put all my permits on a map. And I can save this and rerun it. I can change the, the query parameter, like the issue date, um, if I want to. And so if I pick on one of these uh, blues buildings, so I'll pick one of these here. And so this is, you know, here's my kind of the tabular information that I selected for the, for the map report. And, you know, here's my applicant mobile phone number and the amount that they paid. And I can drill down on the permit by clicking on the permit. Again, it's opening in this other tab up here. So that's kind of a, where I would see that. So. And that's really how easy it is to create reports in CitizenServe. Um, you know, violation reports, inspection, you know, how many inspections, activities, um, you know, those types of things. But we, we really create a lot of custom reports for our customers. Um, you can see this user here has got map reports. Um, we've got some other tickets, rat, they do rat baiting, you know, so they've got a, a rat rat map report, um, ticket lookup, tickets issued on a map. So this is like, uh, we'll see what they've been doing this year in terms of tickets. Um, and Jim, so, I, I, just, uh, I, just, I just checked, we're running for the year, we're running about, seven, we are running at 78% uh, of the tickets are closed same day. And for the month we're running so at 80%. Support, so that, our, that includes our support yeah. requests? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that includes the big stuff, like when someone wants to change fees or, you know, things that, you know, just are inherently going to take more than a day. But just to give you guys a feel, you know, we're, you know, it's a very high percentage of the tickets that come in that we resolve that day. Not not violation tickets, but uh, customer right, support, right. support requests. Right, yeah. yeah. thank, thank you. Yeah. So um, any other questions? 
there was one thing I, I don't know that I covered it. Um, the inspectors, kind of how the org people organize their their work. Um, the Gorian is the inspectional services um, supervisor. So when you look at his metrics, um, he's got a lot of information about his staff. You know how many. Um, you know how many uh, uh, tasks and assignments are pending for my staff, and um, you know he's got active food licenses, and he's kind of tracking uh, a bunch of information here. If I go in as somebody who's an inspector, um, this is a, a health inspector. Um, you know he's got. Um, his tasks here, you can go in and see your tasks on a map. Um, you know, kind of this is what he's got going. Um, you can kind of slice and dice your inspections, reviews. Um, I can pull in, you know, layers uh, in the system and kind of see that in relation to my tasks and um, all that sort of stuff. The uh, There's ways to sort. You can sort by address, task, status. Um, We've got um, different, you know, if I want to see my overdue tasks, I can look at those. Um, we've got these, the arrow means priority over here. This is a alert, so there's a an alert on this license here. Um, and then down here, you can see his metrics. You know, he's got, you know, um, food inspections completed this month, you know, kind of with the different statuses. The metrics are like reports. So at any time, you can ask for uh, a new metric, or you can pull from the existing metrics and put them on your home page. But you can drill down on these. If I want to see all my failed food inspections, I can look at those. And then I can drill down on these. So you know, this kind of a, um, these are all kind of custom metrics that were set up for, for their food inspectors, active licenses. Um, so that's kind of a. You know, you can kind of see all your inspections, and then you can sort your inspections, and there's different areas. There's a task area here that kind of allows you to drill down into a more detailed view of um, of your task list. So that's another thing that's available. So. Um, any other questions? Or yeah, I have one. Oh, right, never go mind. ahead. Oh, no, go right ahead. I, I was just curious. I don't have your, your RFQ in front of me. Who in in Ohio or possibly Northeast Ohio is currently using CitizenServe? Athens has been a customer for a long time. Um, okay. It might even might even be a decade. <laughs> um, uh, Middleton, Middletown, Middletown, Ohio. Okay. They're they're a customer. Um, We've got Philadelphia, you Jeff. know, kind of Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a customer, and uh, Wilkes-Barre. Um, there's some Pennsylvania customers we've got too. Uh, do you have a Ray? Do you have any? Yeah, Jefferson Township is uh, one. Oh, you know Wood, Wood County uh, is too. Wood, Wood County is too. Yeah. Yeah, and they're they're Jackson, doing um, Jackson Center. Yeah, they might be. I don't think Jackson Center is a customer. Are they? Well, anyway, so the uh, but Wood County is a good one to talk to because they do um, that department um, kind of a multi-jurisdictional. They do inspections um, and permitting for more than one jurisdiction within the county. Okay, great. Um, and let's see if we can any other notable. Um, Accounts up there. We do do a lot. I mean, it seems like there's a, there's a lot of interest in the rental registrations and rental inspections, and we do do a lot of that. Um, not necessarily in Ohio, but um, in the in the Northeast, that's that's uh, that's pretty common. And we have, you know, there's there's customers of ours like City of Sacramento in California. We run their whole rental housing inspection program. You know, and they've got you know 400, 500,000 uh, citizens. So, um, so we we do do a lot of that. Um, 
it just it's you know it works well with our licensing module. Um, and uh, yeah, that's I think that's all I can think of. I would talk to Athens, the Middletown, um, Wood County. I mean, if you're looking for specifically in Ohio, uh, Somerville is a good example. You know, they've got 120 users. They're Massachusetts, but um, the thing with um, the thing with with Massachusetts is kind of interesting is that they don't have any counties there. So um, the the cities do all the county stuff that you would see in other um, in other states. And so we ended up, you know, we, we did their building permits, we did their health licensing, and I mean, we just did everything. Um, you know, so it's, it's uh, you know, what they have to deal with is, is, is not just zoning and permit, building permits, but, you know, um, health inspections and, you know, um, all sorts of different types of issues. We, we do, you know, all sorts of types of tickets and stuff for them, um, you know, so. Um, typically, what happens with us is we, you know, we start working with you. Know, they started out with 50 users. Now they got 120. Um, there's just you just find more areas that you can automate. Uh, you know, we can do really complex licensing. We can do um, dog licenses. Uh, we can do you know really complex permitting. The city of Philadelphia uses us for their air management uh, services. You know, which is all EPA, asbestos abatement, you know, plant management uh, and reporting, you know, stuff like that. So we can do really complicated things, and we can also do the simple stuff too. So okay, great. And they're just Thank they you. end up being they just end up being different file types in Citizen Serve. You know, um, you know, it's a uh, it's very configurable. So, and you can imagine. I mean, we you know we've got hundreds of customers, and you know. Somebody in South Florida has got really different problems than you know somebody in Washington State. You know, so <laughs> absolutely. Um, yep. Uh, are you able to schedule uh, reports to run on uh, you know oh, say a weekly basis that would automatically get emailed out? Yes, we can. Um, you know, I mentioned before we're you know the reports we do oftentimes are just a sort of procedure that's displayed within the application. Um, you just take that stored procedure, and we use the, um, I forget what it's called. There's a, um, a job scheduler um, in SQL Server, right? And so we just schedule a job. It's, it's super simple. So. Okay, thank you. So I have two questions. Number one is um, for the inspector with the iPad in the field, um, when they issue a violation notice from the field, it automatically goes into the system, so there's no need to bring it back and put it in a port or anything. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, when they, all the forms are saved. Does the does that iPad have the ability, or will the system have the ability to generate a daily report for the inspector activities? Yes. Yes, we can. You know, we can either, and we can make it a custom report that shows up on your um, on your in your metrics or you could have it down in your links down here so we can we can get as you know as custom as you want you know for um, you know kind of how you want to just how you want to deal with uh, your not only inspection scheduling but just you know routing or those types of things so So with the rental registrations, there's over 2,000 of them. We could generate the um, our, our registration same time every year. So, so really, you know, the questions kind of went or kind of looked a little bit like you're wanting to schedule specific days for specific people. Um, I know that most of our, which you can do. There's there's no problem with that. But for um, this is Urbana, and so they have a they send out a notice, right? So here's some notices: um, the systematic inspection due first notice, right? Um, when they run this report, they're actually and our reports can do processing, right? So um, you know, basically, you know, I can go in here and I don't know if there's anything in here, but uh, I can 
basically we're going to make assignments um, when we send the notices out. So if I send if I send out a thousand notices, um, I can put the logic in there to um, let me get rid of that one there. I can put the logic in there to um, schedule the inspections. And in this case, they're really scheduled as a task, right? But we can also do, um, and the tasks show up on the inspector's um, list. So we can also do, um, we can make them events and spread them out over a couple of days and focus on a couple of areas. So there's, there's a lot of different ways we do that, you know, because you, you could be managing, you know, thousands of inspections. Um, that, and you want to kind of op optimize how you're doing it. That wasn't what I was asking. What the question was, what we do is we send all of our single and two family rental registrations out the last December and the registrations must be completed by January 31st. So all, what, I, what the question that they were asking was all 2,600 of those could be generated for a mass mailing with the, yeah. with the registration date. They, we don't have to schedule the inspections. We just need the registration. Oh. Completed on time. Yeah, that's just yeah. That's um, that's just your renewal notice, right? You're, you're sending it out to all your. Yep. You got to go to the website, update your information, you know, pay your fee, and yep, that's. You got no problem doing that all at once. Okay. So we sometimes we have to um, uh, with the with the reports, you know, we have customers that have you know might send out ten thousand notices and we have like a you know there's a preview capability see this test run here so you can test run your notices um, and then there's also an ability to you know, sometimes we build in a capability to say I only want to do a thousand at a time right so you know they don't print out the first ten thousand or the first thousand and the next thousand um, you know that's it's and you can also print them out to PDF you know, so that you've got the notices there, and if you have any kind of printing problem or uh, somebody who prints those out for you or mails them out for you, you can do that. 